Uh, Danny from Midland, Texas, and we're here for a wedding. So Donald Trump has had an interesting first month in office. What do you think so far? Uh, I'm pleased so far. What policies of his do you support? Uh, <laughs> all of them. Uh, immigration, uh, the uh, defunding of Planned Parenthood, uh, the worldwide thing that they did. Um, I'm waiting for the corporate tax to the cutting corporate tax that alone would have saved me a quarter of a million dollars last year so uh, i hope he follows through with that um, if he starts the wall then i'm going to get on a plane and go take a picture in front of the wall so <laughs> uh, um all of them i mean i'm pleased well immigration's a big one you, you support restrictions on people being able to come to the united states then yes i do and what should those restrictions be well um we we already have a process. I'm okay with the process. I don't know all the fine details to the process, but stick to the process. Uh, as long as they come here legally, you know, I don't have a problem with anybody coming as long as, as uh, but we need to seal the borders. We need to, we need to close up the borders. We can't just, you know, we, we can't continue to just let anybody in here. Do you believe in freedom? I do. Do you believe in freedom of movement? I do. So people should be able to move wherever they want as long as they're not violating someone's property? Or the law. So is the law what's right or is there a different standard of what's right and wrong? Well, it depends on how you look at it, but, you know, above, you know, obey the laws of the land. Uh, we can't just go into Mexico and do whatever we want to or Iran or anywhere else. So. Um, you know, I guess you asked me, do I believe in freedom of movement? Yeah, but I also believe in following the laws of the land. Well, what if the laws are wrong? Then, through your government, make changes to the laws. So you don't believe in the American founders committing civil disobedience, overthrowing unjust government, anything like that? You think we should just obey? No, uh, that's what they did, and you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with that either. So I guess I'm on both sides of the coin. <laughs> well, so if you believe in freedom of movement, it means that the only restriction to movement really should be if I'm running into someone else's private property, right? Like if it's just public property, if it's unclaimed property, you know, any, anybody should be able to, to travel freely in that area, right? Well, what is, uh, what is public property and what is unclaimed property? Well, if it's not private property, then it would fall under that category. Well, if somebody owns it. Well, in this case, it's the government pretending to own it or, or claiming ownership over uh, a huge, vast expanse and saying we own everybody and everything within our borders. I mean, is, is it right for government to make that claim? I don't, I don't like that, like the, BM, the, the BLM, yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, stuff like that. I'm, I, there's a lot of that that I don't like. I, I agree. Well, I own a piece of property in Arizona. And if, if I want to invite somebody onto my property from anywhere in the world, say they can come on here, why, what gives government the right to put up a line in between me and them and say, no, that person can't come and, and be on my land? I don't know the answer to that, but, um, but if they're not, if they're not legal then to be here, then you shouldn't have the right to invite anybody you want to. Well, so I got to get government permission to do something on property that I own. I got to get government's permission to have someone come onto my land. If, if, they, if I want them to be on my land and they want to come on my land and they're not hurting anybody and I'm not hurting anybody, you're saying that I got to go to some third party jerks and government, some bureaucrat and get their permission to do something that, that we should have a right to do as independent human beings with freedom of movement? Well, I understand exactly what you're saying, but at the same time, if that goes wrong, you made the comment, if they're not hurting anyone but who are you gonna call if they start hurting you well You're definitely not government you will you'll call the cops uh, I, I wouldn't I mean the cops really are there to enforce the will, will of government but you would also have to agree that you are the minority in that situation just like anybody who protests as soon as if they get assaulted what do they do they're gonna call the cops that the cops are who they're protesting so um, well, I would try not to, at least, and I think you'd appreciate, too, that, you know, when seconds count, the police are just minutes away, I agree, but what right? what are you going to do? I mean, if, if they start hurting you, are you going to kill them? 
and then just bury them on your property? Is that is that your idea of freedom? Well, if, if I have to, if it's in self-defense, yeah, I'll defend myself as I see fit. I don't, I don't see that I disagree with you at that with that at all, but that's what I'm saying is we do have laws. The government, yeah, I, I can't even build. I can't build on my property without getting permission. I mean, I understand all yeah, that, and I don't like it, but, you know, there's some battles that, you know, for now you pick to choose to fight. Well, you know, as the average American, we work for government about half the year. If you could keep that, if your income was essentially doubled and you could put that towards private security, you could put that towards doing what you wanted with your money, you could build on your own property without permission, you could seek your own means of protecting yourself and your community, would you, would you give up letting government have this territorial monopoly and control freedom of movement if you had the ability to provide that for yourself? Well, that's a tough. That's a tough question because what am I giving up? The government does protect us. I mean, from what? How? From invaders. What was the, mean, What was the last time America was attacked by a foreign force? Ex exactly. Well, nine eleven, right? No. Well, yes, that that is. And why did they attack us on nine eleven, according to the government? I don't know. We're not going to dive off well, into that one. Right really now. easy. The CIA says it's blowback. It was because the American military, like when I was in Iraq in, in 2004 with the Marine Corps, was I'm meddling not, in other countries. I'm not 100% believing in what happened on 9-11, so we won't go there. No, uh, no, look. <laughs> let's not go there. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm shot out, sir. This is the third time today that I've raised 9-11 to try to make this point. And you are the third person who said, I don't really believe the government story about 9-11 either. That's, that's three for three. That's crazy. But the narrative here, like you say, protect us from foreign invaders. You know, the American founders were against the idea of a standing army at all. And actually having a military, they knew, makes us less safe because it means we're willing to be taxed. We're willing to give up our rights, our freedoms, our right to, to own the product of our labor and end up working for government half the year. I mean, that's insane. But also, the people who allegedly attacked us on 9-11 allegedly did it because American military forces were meddling in the Middle East. The CIA calls this blowback. So it's really kind of sad that you're led to support government defending you and protecting you when they're protecting us from the enemies that they make. And I can say we make because I was in the Marine Corps, I was in Fallujah in 2004, we made enemies faster than we could kill them. So I would just hope you would consider this, that you've been, you might have been duped to, li to believe. We're, we're all duped. We're all duped daily. I mean, you can't turn on the news, you can't, who do you believe? I mean, you can't, even 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 my kids' school books, we're duped. There's no doubt about that. Well, let me just, in, in, in this one specific way, I'm, I'm honored that you, that you are so receptive to this because you supported this policy of restricting immigration, but maybe now you would consider that even in that you've been duped and that would we be better off being able to provide for our own protection in a free market way with respect for individual rights. And when you turn to government for protection, you, you become a slave, you give up your freedom, and you end up becoming less safe altogether as a result. Okay, so if you were the man, what would be your policy on immigration? How would you control it? The only legitimate borders are private property borders. So if people want to come together as a community where they own all the property and say, we're going to put up a border right, around let me, that. Let me pause that. Sure. Okay. So I used to live on a ranch in far west Texas, 23,000 acres. Okay. Illegals would stream across our property all the time. They would cut water lines because they were dying of thirst, literally. They would have blisters on their feet. They would have Coke bottles strapped to their, to their, to their feet. What do you do with those people? Whenever you catch them on your private property, now I don't know what you're considering a pro, you know, your property, an acre, two acres, 10,000, 23,000 yeah. acres, but as a, in your policies, what rights would you have sure. and what would you do with them? Sure. Well, first, it's clear that government is not working in this situation. Government sure. is government is not protecting you. In fact, government is making this a problem because if it wasn't for the economic inequality, if it wasn't for controls of the flow of goods and services, economic inequality for who? America or Mexico? Well, everybody that's disadvantaged by government control, trade, and corporatism ends up create. you know, they, they, they create the situ situations of desperation where you have people who are willing to endure that hardship for the chance of a better economic life. If they, if they, were, al if they were allowed to come in legally, they'd be able to go around your property, they'd be able to use the roads and go directly to get their jobs. They, they can come in legally. Spin right there. 
<laughs> my wife is actually an anchor baby and her family has come in legally they've they've went through the through the process so i would want you if you if you have a situation where people are invading your property to be able to use your income and your resources to have the choice of who you give that money to to defend you right now government if, has a monopoly you don't get a choice myself? 20, uh, 223 rounds or 33 cents a piece, right? I totally support that. You defend your property how you see fit. But is that what you would do? I Yeah, I mean, I, well, I'm a felon, so I have other government restrictions <laughs> on being able to use firearms. But no, there, there are some very powerful air rifles out there. No, yeah, I, I do believe in using force to defend your own property. I don't believe in using force to violate people's freedom of movement on other people's property or on public property or on unclaimed property. And if we got rid of that government monopoly, we'd have a lot better public safety and better ways of dealing with these issues. I don't think you'd have better public safety. I think, uh, I think you do need to have a rule of law. I really do. Well, I'm not saying I'm against the rule of law. The rule of law is the natural law. You own yourself, and I can't violate your rights unless you're a threat to me. Whereas with government, it's, well, you're making money? We're going to point a gun to your head and say, give us half your income or you go to jail. That's what, that's, that's what government is doing in, in the, the nature of its existence, because taxation is theft. By the natural law, everything government is doing is made possible by its illegal activities. Fair enough. But with that being said... I'm not saying you're afraid of me, but if I walk up to you with a 45 and tell you give me half of your money, and we don't have I'll a I'll just give you all of it. Fair <laughs> enough. You see what I'm saying? Well, the no, rule of law would mean that I'm going to have better community ways of accountability to hold you accountable you after that happens. You may, but there's going to be a lot of people that get pushed to the side on that. Well, right now, people get pushed to the side with government. I think less people will get pushed to the side if we didn't have that monopoly. We have a free market, and we have choice and protection services. No, because then your elites would have all the protection. I mean, I, I don't know. That's how it is now. The, who protects the elites? No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. But right now, if somebody, you know, a kid walks by and I go to beating the hell out of them, then... I'm going to have cops all over me, and I'm going to get arrested. Well, actually, they, hopefully here you'd have tourists. I don't see any I cops. I see a lot of tourists. I bet they would. I, be, I bet they would. Maybe if I was beating on a kid. You and I get in a fight right here, I bet people just keep walking by. Or they'd be recording. <laughs> they would be recording. I know that for a fact. Well, I just hope you consider this and that you see at least, like you said, you were duped. And there are, probably, there, there are things that we don't know that we're duped about. And if you consider freedom as an ethical principle, you'll be able to see some of the contradictions and understand some of the more ways that, that you've been duped that maybe you hadn't considered before. So thank you so much for your time today, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Well, hold on a second. When I was in the military, I was serving bankers, politicians, and war profiteers. You don't want to thank me for serving them, do you? I'm thanking you for the greater good. It's not in the interest of the greater good to be serving evil people. I disagree with you. I really do. And on that on that front, I disagree you with you. You think politicians aren't evil? No, I do. I, you know, I, that, that's what's said. I mean, it's it's a two-edged sword. I mean, but I'm, I'm thanking you <laughs> for your public service, period. It, w it was not. But th I appreciate that. And you know what? I'm really glad to, to be speaking to someone so open-minded. I know I, I've planted a couple seeds today, right? Challenge you to think a little bit. All right. I've always got plant seeds planted. <laughs> This is Adam Kokesh. Thanks for watching. Please share this video and support this production by going to patreon.com slash adamkokesh.